Blessings to everybody. So glad you are here with us for the festival of the new moon, which is also the night of Hanukkah. So let's wish everybody a happy Hanukkah. Happy hey! Happy Hanukkah to everybody. If you have uh, gotten our handouts that we have available on our website, one of the things we also like to do is to go over uh, the verses from Psalms 119, uh, talking about the Hanukkah and the importance of having the light of the Torah. Uh, from Psalms 119, verse 97 and 98, listen to what David said. We all should have the heart of David, right? right. Listen to what David said. Oh, how I love your Torah. It is what I meditate on all day long. Your commandments are what make me wiser than my enemies, for they are with me forever. Wow. When most people look at the law, they go, ooh, law, evil. Yeah. No. David says, I love your laws. I love your commandments. Listen to verses 103 through 105. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth, it is through your precepts that I get understanding. That's why I hate every false way. Here it is. Your word is a lamp to my feet and the light to my path. Wow, if we want to have light, we need to have the light of God's word. Listen to verse 113 through 117. David says, I hate vain thoughts, but your law is what I love. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I am going to keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word that I may live. Let me not be ashamed of my hope. You hold me up and I'll be safe. I will have respect unto your statutes continually. Uh, so those are some... Uh, Amazing words to understand God's law at this time and how his law is the light. Okay, here we are on the new moon of Tibet. In Genesis 1.14, we know that God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And then he says, Let them be for what? Signs and seasons and days and years. And that's not talking about winter, spring, summer, or fall. It's talking about the appointed times that God has on his calendar. Now, the new moon is the most pivotal day of every month because without knowing when the first is, how can you know when the 10th is or the 15th is or any other day of the month? So we need to sanctify uh, the new moon. Uh, and so the other thing I want to point out is the Bible begins with a tree of life and listen to what it says in Genesis 2 9 out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food and then he said but then he also created the tree of life in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of both good and evil I think it's interesting this goes back to assimilation the tree of knowledge had both good and evil on it and so sometimes we need to not ask the question, is this good or evil? Because it's on the same tree. It'll kill you either way. The question is, does it bring life? But let's look at Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2. What do we find in the last days? It says, he showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And right in the middle of the street, on one side of the river, on that was the tree of life and it says that it bore 12 different kinds of fruit yielding its fruit every month can you imagine a tree that produces 12 different kinds of fruit that's incredible well when it talks about it's going to yield its fruit every month do you think that means january and february and march i don't think so this is talking about the biblical months well what about during the millennial reign Will we keep the new moon during the thousand year reign of Messiah? Well, let's look at Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1. It says, Thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east will be shut six working days. On the Sabbath day it will be open, and in the day of the new moon it will be open. Oh my goodness, for the thousand years that Messiah is here, he's going to make sure we keep the Sabbath and that we keep the new moon. Wow. Oh, how about... In eternity, when there's a new heaven and a new earth, well, guess what? There's going to be a new sun and a new moon. 
but we'll still keep the new moon. Look at Isaiah 66, verse 22 and 23. As the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, will remain before me, says the Lord. So, speaking to Israel, the Jewish people, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it'll happen from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another. All flesh is going to come and worship before me. That's incredible. That's why we should be keeping the new moon now and setting it apart, because we're going to do it during the millennial reign, and we're going to do it for eternity. Now, look at Psalm 104, 19 through 21. Listen why the Lord created the moon. He says he made the moon to mark the seasons, the, and that means his appointed times, when the first day of the month is. And then he says, the sun knows when it's supposed to go down. And then it said concerning God, you make darkness and it's night, wherein all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The young lions are roaring after their prey and they seek their food from God. So God created the moon. So every time you see the moon, know it's to set apart the nation of Israel. That's the reason why. As a matter of fact, listen to Psalms 81, verse 3 and 4. It says that we're to blow the horn at the new moon and at the full moon for our feast day. That refers to Passover, Sukkot. It's a statute for Israel and an ordinance of the God of Jacob. Now, I've got my little shofar here. And so we're going to blow this. Let me go back one. Amen. Yay. Yay. All right. We blow the shofar at the new moon. But what we have to find out, this whole idea of the new moon and the moon itself is all about God's covenant with David. Listen to Psalm 8920. God says, I found David my servant with my holy oil. I anointed him with whom my hand will be established. My arm will also strengthen him. So here we see God is establishing his covenant with David in Psalm 89. Now listen to verse 23 and 24. God says, I'm going to beat to pieces his adversaries before him. Smite them that hate him, but my faithfulness, my mercy will be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. Uh, David is from what tribe? Judah. Judah. Okay, wow. That means he's Jewish. Okay. And God's going to keep his covenant with him forever. Matter of fact, look at verse 33 through 37. God says, nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will not utterly take from David. I will not allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I won't break. I won't alter the word that's gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed, that's the Jewish people, will endure forever. And his throne, as the sun before me, it will be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. The moon is God's faithful witness in the sky that his covenant with the Jewish people will never end. When we see a rainbow, we think of God's covenant with Noah. When you see the moon, you have to think of God's covenant with the Jewish people. Listen to Jeremiah 33, 25 through 26. It says, thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, if I've not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, only then will I cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant. Hey, how many of you know they're still there in the sky? Okay. Exodus 12, 2, God says this month is to be the beginning of your months. It'll be the first month of the year to you. Well, that means they had to sanctify it and set it apart. Now, my question is, do we make ourselves holy or does God make us holy? God makes us holy to him, but we're to maintain that holiness. In Leviticus 27 and 8, it says, consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. And you will keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So the Lord sanctifies us. And the way we stay sanctified is by doing what he says. Um, let's go look at Leviticus 18.30. It says, therefore, you will keep my charge and do not any of these abominable customs which were done before you and don't defile yourselves. I am the Lord your God. So again here, God sets us apart. He cleans us up. He sanctifies it. But it's our job to keep sanctified. Now, with that said, let's say the prayers for the new moon. Let's stand. And then after the prayers, uh, I'm going to do a short teaching on the month of Tibet uh, together. 
May it be your will, O God and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen. Selah. Together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the skies and by your word and all of heaven's hosts with the breath of your mouth, you gave them appointed times and roles, and they never missed their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, O Lord, who renews new moons. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And I'm just going to do a real short teaching on the month of Tibet. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> tragedy struck three times in the month of Tibet. Three times horrible things happened. What is one of them? What is the one that jumps out is the 10th of Tibet. This is where in Ezekiel, listen to this, chapter 24, verse 1. It says, again in the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, that's the tenth of Tibet, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, write the name of this day down. Even this same day, the king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this day. Wow. So the tenth of Tibet is a horrible day. It's the very day Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem for about three years. Does anyone know when the tenth of Tibet falls this year? In Zechariah 8, 19, it mentions these four fast days uh, that uh, the Jews have been fasting for several thousand years. Well, how do we know if we don't know when it is in our calendar? But the 10th of Tevet is one of these horrible fast days. What happened the day before, historically? On the 9th of Tevet is the day Nehemiah died. Nehemiah died on the 9th of Tevet. Guess what happened on the 8th of Tevet? It was on the 8th of Tibet that King Ptolemy in the 3rd century B.C. ordered the Torah be written in the Greek language, which totally, in one sense, changed history. Because now, rather than learning Hebrew, it went into another language and then into all the languages, which is good if you have good translations. Now, Tibet always begins during the last days of Hanukkah. Tibet is a time of transition between darkness and light. The decisions we make in a time of transition is what determines our future. And believe me, here in the United States, we're in a time of transitions. And the decisions we make is going to determine our future. The choices we have been making and continue to make will become the pattern for what our future can look like. This month, we will learn from the tribe of Dan. Dan is the tribe for this month. And from Dan, we can learn what happens when we don't heed God's warning. Hanukkah is all about destroying idols. The tribe of Dan was the first tribe to build an idol. The tribe of Dan and Hanukkah go together. Look at Judges chapter 18, verse 30 and 31. It says, And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests. These aren't Levites. 
they made sons of Manasseh priests for the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. They had their own priesthood, and they did it from Manasseh. And they set them up Micah's graven image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. 369 years was the house of God in Shiloh. And here they make a graven image. And the Manasseh are the priests. I don't know how many of you knew that. But also they say this is the reason Jerusalem was besieged in this month. In 1 Kings 12, 28 through 30, it says, Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. And he said, you have gone up long enough to Jerusalem. Behold, these are your gods, O Israel, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And he set one in Bethel, put the other in Dan. And this became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. So when we think of Hanukkah, when you think of the tribe of Dan, it's all about are we going to assimilate? Are we going to create our own festivals? Are we going to create our own times that we want to meet with God? Are we going to follow his appointed times? Now, while Judah led the nations when they traveled, Dan was the last tribe. Dan was the rear guard, okay, of all the camps. We see that in Numbers 10, 25. The standard of the camp of the children of Dan, which was the rear ward of all the camps. In other words, Dan was at the very back. And who got attacked by Amalek? The very back. And so here we see that they were the first to attack Amalek when the feeble of Israel were attacked from the rear. Dan was the tribe that was being attacked. Listen to Numbers 11.1. 1. And the people were as murmurers speaking evil in the ears of the Lord. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and devoured in the uttermost part of the camp. Okay, this is where the tribe of Dan was. We also know Dan is likened to a serpent. Listen to Genesis 49, 16 through 18. Dan shall judge his people. As one of the tribes of Israel, Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that bites the horse's heel so that his rider will fall backward. I've waited for your salvation, O Lord. So Dan is compared to a serpent, but he's also compared to a lion. In Deuteronomy 33, 22, it says, And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. Now, we know Moses compares the tribe to a lion, pointing out the courage and the resolution these animals have. Furthermore, Bashan is a mountain known for the fierce lions that lingered upon it so that they can surprise their enemy by leaping down on their prey in the plains below. So we see many strengths in the tribe of Dan, especially when it comes to tactical warfare. Dan had the ability to surprise attack enemies without them knowing the tribe was even coming. Now, we know who was one of the judges from the tribe of Dan. Samson. Samson's father was from Dan, but his mother was from Judah. So Dan and Judah are connected in several ways. In Exodus 38, 22 and 23, there was these two guys that helped put together Moses' tabernacle that was given all kinds of wisdom. One was Bethsaleel, who was the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he made all that the Lord commanded Moses, and with him was Aholiab, okay, of the tribe of Dan. He was the engraver, the cunning workman, and he was an embroiderer in blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. So here Judah and Dan are tied together. Uh, one of the other events in Tibet is from Ezekiel 33, 21. It says, It came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, which is Tibet, on the fifth day of the month, that one escaped out of Jerusalem and came to Ezekiel and told him the city was smitten. So there's a lot of interesting things. One of the things I don't have time to mention. With that said, we're going to close with the priestly blessing. Let's stand. Ivareka Adonai Vishmareka Yaer Adonai Panavileka Vihuneka. Isa Adonai Panavileka Vyasam Laka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In that most wonderful name, Eye Asher Eye. Amen. Happy Hanukkah!